Hiya, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to create a really beautiful and balanced lip. And for context, I am a pro makeup artist of 17 years, so I've got tons of tips in this mind palace of mine to share with you. And that's Ludo running around like a loon in the background, that thudding. Okay, so let's just ignore that. And for reference, all my videos are completely unfiltered on here. It's real skin, hashtag for life. And I don't edit my videos. So you see everything in real time because I think sometimes we can get a bit deluded that we can just go and have a lip or it's done in fast forward, which is nice to see on certain platforms. And you'll see that more on my Instagram and more on my, uh, the other one, TikTok, um, and even shorts on here. But here I like to do it in real time, so it's like completely uncut, the raw, real deal with you. So we never know what's going to happen. Will the doorbell go? Oh, the cats are going to have a fire, I think. Guys, Ludo! 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 He looks like he's literally gonna... Ludo! What's this? What's this? I hate it when they fight. I hate it. Come here! Lulu Bear! What's this? Not working. He's gonna go for him in a minute. Um, I'm apologising in advance for whatever you're going to hear. Anyway, so when it comes to lips, it's really important that they are in tip-top condition. So I have had um, the which lip balm? The Tatcha lip balm. This is so gorgeous. This is the Camella lip balm, gold spun lip balm, and in it are flecks of gold, and it is amazing it smells beautiful it's got like a floral kind of summery scent to it and it feels amazing on the lip so it's really important to prep your lip beforehand and leave it to kind of sit so whenever I do my skincare that'll be the first step I do and even before that if you've got very dry lips it's important to deal with that situation so there's a multitude of things you can use. Some people use very um, soft tooth brushes on the lip. You can even use your gentle exfoliator, um, your like toning exfoliator on the lip to get rid of any dry skin. There's many ways basically. So do whatever works for you and works well. Um, on set I use... <coughs> I use these peel pads by, well they're actually wipes that are exfoliating. Obviously not the most sustainable choice but I'm really limited when I'm on a job to what I can do. Like I don't have time to do a full on lip scrub and whatnot. Oh I've got the packet upside down. Lol. Um, and these come, I'm just going to show you, with a great textured edge. So can you see? that can you see those little balls on there so I tear off a bit I don't use a whole wipe on the person because that's such a waste and I will exfoliate the lip with that and you can really feel it working and it gets the blood flow going so the the lips look a little bit more pink and a bit more juicy and yeah so that works really really well however not the most sustainable option kind of for home and stuff but if you really struggle it might be a good thing to explore so do whatever you need to do there, slather your lip balm on and then marinade and you're ready. But what I see a lot of people do is they will pop on lip liner onto this very wet surface which is going to do you no favours because there's quite a lot of emolliency and slip which is going to mean things aren't going to last. Hello little cat. You going to come say hi Maggie? Come here, come here. Come here. Are you going to say hi to everyone? Hello! Hi everybody! Be talking about all things lip. Are you going to run away now? I'd go the other way. Okay. 
Oh damn, the cats. They're just hilarious. So, it's important that we take off what we've got on. I left my tissues in my kit, which is really annoying, so I'm just gonna use a cotton pad. I don't always like using cotton pads because, I mean, you can just use like a towel or, um, yeah, I don't always like to use cotton pads, but I know these are good ones because some cotton pads leave you with like wool attached to you, like you're about to spin something. And these actually have a bit of a textured edge. Can you see that? So these will take off any excess flakes. So an ideal lip is one that has been moisturized and then is now dry from removing it. <laughs> Seems mad, doesn't it? I know. And now I'm taking my brush with concealer and I'm just buffing the edges of my lip ever so slightly. So I'm not doing that whole 90s, 2000 things where we applied essentially concealer on the lip as a gorgeous lip colour. I mean, it's probably going to come back. We'll wait and see. What's on my lip? What am I eating? Nothing. Something imaginary. Didn't know if I'd like a hair on me, so I'm saying. Okay, so now that's done. And what we're gonna do at is look at the shape. So the best way to create symmetry on a lip is by creating, starting from a center point rather from an edge. Yeah, you wanna start from the center point to create symmetry. So this is gonna be very difficult to just do on myself because I can only use my own lip but it's about creating balance um, and unity in the shape. Okay, so yeah, starting from the center is really key. So use a nice and sharp pencil. I'm just gonna do a quite nudie lip to sort of go with the makeup I've got on already. But these principles work for any lip color. And you can actually use nude lip liners to work with bright colours because that way when the lipstick fades a bit you're not going to be left with just like a line of red or purple whatever colour lipstick liner you've got on. So what I like to do and actually having a mirror in front of you like this I'm just using an eyeshadow palette can really help you see kind of imperfections if you're not sure. So let's analyse my lips so I'm going to look at them straight on so I can see that this side here is more curved than this side. This side's a little bit more pointed for the cats are hissing at each other. And this side is a bit more pinched in. And a good thing to do with lips as well is actually look at them from the side. So look at this side. So can you see as I twist my head? There's more fullness here. So seeing things in a mirror, things become more apparent and it's so much easier doing this on someone else versus your own face because that's just how it is. Let's see how these are just kind of a bit shorter. So this is just giving me information to work with to balance the lip out and I'm just gonna be doing a natural lip, nothing kind of crazy. So then I'll start in the center. This lip liner, by the way, is Vive and it's Velvet Sands. It's a neutral colour with a bit of a grey undertone. It's like more on the peach side. So, an important thing to do is rather than go down with the pencil, because the pencil's got this really nice sharp tip and we want to keep that sharpness generally on the outside. So, try and do your lip pencil so the point is facing the outer edge rather than like this. If you're going to be doing it like that, you're going to be getting a bit more of a blurred lip which is cool if that's the effect that you want. So I am doing small strokes and motions to get that line defined. And with lips, what's really important is to not like press super hard, 
equally not to go really light because the lips are so textured if you just go really light the product is just going to bounce off the lip texture and it's sort of it's really annoying so once i've got that on and you can see all my piercings that i used to have one two three <laughs> in my lip so now i've got that on i can establish what i want to do i can either underdraw or overdraw slightly to create more balance in the shape so on this side here I'm going to overdraw a little bit to match the fullness I have on this side so I'm going to go millimeter by millimeter and draw out And notice I'm stretch my lip ever so slightly when doing it, but mostly, I forgot to say this, is the most important thing to do. When you're trying to get balance in your lip, keep them relaxed. I see so many people like doing this and this, and the thing is, you barely pull that face. Like a lot of the time, you're either kind of smiling or resting. <laughs> so, keep it, keep it natural. And then, if you really want to check the line to see if it's really nice and sharp, you can then stretch a lip once you've got the shape and just make sure every kind of crevice is filled. And don't go too low on the outer corners or else you'll get a bit of that joker mouth, which, again, it's a bit more of a niche kind of lip. And your lip liner will start to obviously wear down. So what's important is to, rather than um, sharpen it loads, pinch it ever so slightly and that'll just get the point back a little bit more. You can do this with a tissue uh, over it rather than. Or another thing you can do is, find it's best if you do this on a flat surface and with a tissue rather than this but you can also get the lip liner okay that's not going to work <laughs> I've just broken the tip on that I'll just show you on the back of my hand but you can get the lip liner and oh I've really fudged this up because sometimes it's such a waste constantly sharpening when you don't need to sharpen but what I'm trying to do and doing this very badly. Let me sharpen this a little bit because I've like got a stub now and then I can show you what I mean. I won't sharpen it fully. I'll just do it to a certain point. And always remember to use a cosmetic sharpener because um, if you don't, you're going to get a too long a point and pencils are, like cosmetic pencils are softer than a drawing pencil for example and you don't want to be mixing those substances as well as mixing them and yeah, cosmetic sharpeners sharpen at a slightly wider angle than a pencil, traditional pencil, is narrower, so there's more surface area. Right, so let me show you what I was trying to show you, is you can literally draw, so normally I'd do this on a tissue, and you can just basically smooth the edge out to get a sharp edge without sharpening it. I just had to because I was silly. Oh, oh my gosh, look at that. This looks like a little, oh, his eye fell off. This looks like a little smiley face. Come on, don't be shy. Look, it's like what? Anyway, so let me get my mirror back. So the top lip, probably the more challenging lip. I mean, it depends on the lip because lips can be so so different. So another good thing to do is tilt your head down, so I can see this side is totally higher than that side. I do a little dot that's actually an equal height so what's really interesting with um, drawing is if you draw 
So this is my right hand and I'm moving it left. That's going to give me a straighter line. If I go round from left to right, that's gonna give me a curve and do the opposite or with the opposite hand, say if you're left-handed. So always be really mindful because if you're gonna do a slight movement like that, that's gonna give you a rounder motion versus this. So use that information. And so now I'm taking this down. Again, my lip is relaxed. I've just dropped my bottom jaw just to give me and I'm using my pinky as a bit of like a compass resting point. And now I'm linking it, I can just flick it up, but in really short motion, so I'm not kind of curving it too much. And now I've got to say, I can just stretch it. Okay, so let's do our other side so I'm going downwards to get a straighter line and then I'm just gonna kind of square that off not square it off but just really mimic that shape on the other side perhaps a bit more pointed Ooh. And the thing is, if you mess up with a lip, let, let me just mess up, so I'm gonna, oh no. Okay, real life mess up. The best thing to do is get a Q-tip or a clean brush, dry, get your hood up and then roll it into the lip. And that, see how that's just taken off that edge really quickly. I see a lot of people do this and they smear and smudge their whole lipstick into their whole. So I've now flipped it and I'm just going to go downwards and then I can go into my concealer. And I'm sort of doing that to stretch the skin and also protect the other lip that I've, the lip line that I've done so it's like not gonna catch it. So my pencil's looking very, sad and blunt so I'm going to sharpen it a little bit <laughs> sorry I've got a sniffly nose so I can see that this is always slightly rounded so I just want to and see how this kind of comes down, it goes out a bit and in, so I want to do a rounder line, so I'm going to come like that. And now I've got that on, I can just feather, so now I'm using the edge to soften everything in a bit more. And if you're using like a long uh, lipstick, you doing a lip liner first might impact the wear of the long wear lipstick. So do your lipstick first and then line it after to sharpen the shape. And then I'm going to go in with my lipstick straight from the bullet. This is MAC uh, Mull Over It. No, Mull It Over, sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a matte texture. And I'm starting in the centre, taking it to the edge. I'm sort of slowing down as I come to the edge, so I'm getting this in the bulk of this shape. And a good tip, actually, if you have, if you personally find your lips really, really challenging to do, a really good thing to do is get the bulk of colour on first. Just whack it on. And then, because you've got the bulk of colour filled in to what you want, you can correct it a bit more easily because you can see the shape so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use the point of that bullet to 
sharpen and give me a bit of a precise edge. See? And now what I can do to further, and be careful, like I know I just pressed my lips together, but if you've got um, very uneven lips, sometimes when you press them, what can happen is you change the shape a bit. There we go. And just to really finish off the lips a bit more, I'm going to go back to my trusty lip liner, sharpen it a little bit on the back of my hand. As I said, this works so much better on a tissue. Let me see if I can just do this on a card. I've got a random card here, just to show you what I mean in a bit more detail. There we go, that's working better now. The cats have found something else on the floor to play with to harass me to feed them an hour early. No, 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 no more, no more. So right, see that now? How that sharpened it really nicely versus stubby stub? And you don't waste by sharpening because you don't always need to sharpen. <laughs> okay, so now I can just go in and give my liner a bit more finesse. What do you think? Gorgeous, isn't it? And there you have it, that's done. And those principles work for every lip colour you do. So try it out. And let me know what other specific lip requests you have or general makeup requests, because there's so much fun we can have with this. If you want to go in with gloss, I think a really good place to put it is kind of in the center. And one last tip I'm going to show you is, what are these cats doing? Is if you get lipstick on your teeth, which happens to us all, put your finger in your mouth and do this. And that way, that will avoid all that color going on your lip. Literally the best trick ever. And you don't have to worry. You can always put a tissue in your mouth. Um, tissue in your mouth? A tissue around your finger if you don't want to get mucky everywhere. But there you have it. The art of the lip. I hope you've enjoyed this detailed, geeky, uncut, styly video. Let me know what other lip tips you would like to see. Oh, lip tips, hello. And I will see you next time.